Hey everybody, I'm Shauna and welcome back to my channel, Shauna Missy Me HD, a self-improvement channel that strives to inform, encourage, and motivate viewers to start their journey in creating and living their best life. And y'all, today I am beyond excited to talk about becoming a doctor as a minority. Uh, don't get me started. So I have to catch some of you guys up to speed. I recently created a TikTok account and I started posting videos, you know, just playing around. And I posted a couple of videos about how to become a doctor and that I'm training uh, in anesthesiology right now. And you will not believe the overwhelming response that I got from followers. I mean, it was literally overnight and there was no way I was not going to create a follow up video for all of my new followers and all of my new subscribers who are hungry for this information. So this video is for my high school students and my college students who want to become a doctor and they don't know where to start, they don't know what to look out for, and they don't really know what to do. Please be on the lookout for follow up videos. I'm gonna talk about all of the questions that were asked. There were like several questions that were asked over and over and over and I'm gonna pretty much go into detail about all of those questions here on my YouTube channel. So look out for the next video where I answer a lot of those questions that were asked on my TikTok. I'm gonna also release a video that talks about my personal journey and experience from high school all the way to where I am now. A lot of you guys ask me questions like, is it hard? And so that video is where I'll go into more detail about the actual challenges that I came across getting from point A to point B as of where I am now. So please be on the lookout out for more videos and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet go ahead and click subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you're the first to know when I release the next video so first I want to give a huge shout out to all of my TikTok followers I cannot believe the responses y'all like I'm so excited because you guys are excited and it makes me even more excited like I'm so happy to be recording this video and helping you guys out but I just want to give y'all a shout out because this video was inspired by y'all y'all asked me so many questions and some of you even asked me to make a video about it and ironically I'm on YouTube making videos so here I am with a special video for my high school and college students about becoming a doctor as a minority and I added the minority part to it because as I was scrolling through all the comments and and likes and stuff I couldn't help but notice that the majority of the people who were engaging with me were minorities not all of them I had a lot of um, followers who were not minorities but a lot of them were and I think that this video is appropriate to be tailored toward that uh, population because I am a minority you know I'm a female I am african-american I'm a first-generation you know doctor so I am a minority and um, I think is it wouldn't be it wouldn't be right if I did not share my personal experience uh, with you guys as a minority and what you can do to increase your chances of getting into med school, matching into the specialty that you want, and ultimately becoming the doctor and living out your dream. So a little bit background about myself. I'm currently uh, a PGY1 intern uh, in residency. So this is my first year for those who are not familiar with the terminology. This is my first year in residency out of four that I have to go, okay? I'm 28 years old and I'm what you would call a traditional student, meaning I graduated high school, I went straight to college. I graduated college, I went straight to med school. And then I graduated med school and I went into residency. So that's what you call a traditional student. A non-traditional student would be someone who either took a break between high school and college or between college and med school, maybe did a different career, maybe traveled the world, studied abroad, whatever it may be. Basically, they didn't go straight through with their training so that's non-traditional so I went straight through I graduated high school at 18 I'm in residency now and I'm 28 so that's already 10 years that went by and I emphasize that because a lot of people ask me how long did it take and I'm gonna talk about that on my Q&A uh, video as well as my journey video um, but that's 10 years right there and I still have three more years to go okay the college that I attended was Texas Southern University in Houston Texas it is a HBCU the medical school that I attended was University of Texas Health Science Centers 
at Houston, which is now known as McGovern Medical School. Um, and also is not too far from my undergrad. So I was probably about 10 miles uh, <laughs> from the medical school that I ended up going to. The specialty that I matched into is anesthesiology. So yes, I am training to be an anesthesiologist. Uh, the total amount of years that it has taken to become an anesthesiologist is 12 years. So four years in college, four years in medical school, and then four years to become an anesthesiologist at minimum. Some people graduate high school early or graduate college early, and then uh, they go on to their medical training. But for the most part, you can expect to be training to become a doctor for at least 11 years. In this video, I'm gonna talk about becoming a doctor as a minority, and just basically go over the timeline of how you become a doctor, but what minorities need to actually focus on to increase their chances of matching into medical school and residency, because you most likely don't have the resources that your colleagues may have. Keep up with the words that I put across the screen, because those are the areas of emphasis that minorities need to focus on when uh, trying to become a doctor. A lot of us will not be able to put shadowing on our resume okay because we don't if we don't know any doctors how can we shadow any some of us will most of us won't so there are other areas that you need to try to maximize on obviously your grades and then the other parts that make up your applications so starting with high school do you need a great gpa in high school to get into medical school the bottom line answer is no basically your high school gpa is going to be considered when you apply to your college or your undergrad when you apply to medical school, they will go based off of your college GPA. So it does not have to be spectacular uh, right now, but if you do have a, a very, very good GPA in high school and you wanna go for those big name colleges like Harvard and Yale and NYU and things like that, then great. If you don't have that, it is perfectly fine to go to a, a less competitive college and you can still go to medical school. My college was not that competitive. Matter of fact, it was probably on the lower side of competitive and I still made it to med school. Of course, you wanna have decent SAT or ACT scores. Uh, that's a basic requirement to get into college. Um, I say decent because again, medical schools are not going to consider what your SAT or ACT score was. That is only to get you into the college that you want. Um, then if you know what college that you wanna to go to, I would. Uh, advise you to go ahead and start googling those colleges see if they require an essay if they do require an essay go ahead and start practicing on how you would answer the typical questions that colleges may ask in essay form so just go ahead and start doing that if you're a high school student if you're a high school senior um, you want to start doing that now also if you're a college um, requires you to have letters of recommendations or if you apply to a program at your college that requires letters of recommendation you should go ahead and start asking those teachers now uh, to write one on your behalf um, I would aim for three three is pretty much a good safe number three different teachers if you can three different subjects go ahead and get those teachers on board with writing you a letter of recommendation and then scholarship if you're like me and your parents cannot just pay for your school you want to make sure you are looking at schools that offer scholarships that you actually qualify for um, a lot of people want to go to big name schools and it's super competitive and they don't realize that they're not that competitive when it comes to getting the scholarships and getting into programs, you know, and they end up missing out on potential scholarships that they could have gotten at other schools had they just kind of backed off a little bit when it comes to those more competitive schools. So for me, I chose to go to a, like I said, a less competitive school and I ended up getting a full academic ride. So my parents paid nothing, I paid nothing. It was awesome and it definitely helps me now because I have a lot of debt collected from uh, medical school. So it helps me that I didn't have any undergraduate debt. So definitely get on top of scholarships, start Googling those schools, see what they offer, you know, just keep, pick a school, Google it one day or one week, spend a whole week going through their entire website so you can figure out what they offer, what you qualify for, and what's the best move for you. And then if you are a Texas high school student or college freshman and you want to be a doctor, you need to inbox me on Instagram, today because there is a program specifically for texas called jamp j-a-m-p stands for joint admissions medical program and it is specifically for disadvantaged texas scholars who want to go to medical school to become a doctor some of you guys watching this video will not qualify but a lot of you guys probably will so if you are from texas and you want to be a doctor and you're in high school 
or a college freshman and you make good grades uh, and you really, really want to be a doctor, you need to DM me on Instagram today. So for college, expect to be in college for three to four years to get your bachelor's degree. Um, a lot of people ask me what they should major in. Honestly, there is no particular subject that you need to major in to go to medical school. Medical schools do not necessarily have a preference for a science major. It is recommended to major in a science because you start to build your science background, which you will need heavily for the MCAT and then moving on into medical school, obviously. So a lot of people choose to major in a science because it helps them build that science background. I majored in biology with a minor in chemistry. It definitely helped me. So if I were to recommend anything to anyone, I would say go for science if you don't really care about any other fields. But if you have a passion for business or a passion for education or a passion for engineering or nursing or anything like that, you can do those degrees as well and still go to medical school. If you choose to major in something outside of a science that doesn't necessarily have a pre-med track, you need to make sure that you're taking all of the required courses that the medical schools want you to take. So you need to make sure that you are on their website looking at their required courses and what you have to take and make sure you're taking those classes in addition to the classes necessary for your degree plan. For your resume, I would definitely make sure you emphasize volunteer work, uh, a part-time job if you work, any sports that you play, any leadership roles in those sports, any clubs that you were a part of, any leadership roles in those clubs. And then if you have hobbies, uh, I would definitely learn how to turn those hobbies into leadership roles. So for me, one of my hobbies and things that I love to do was praise dance at church. And I was in fact the praise dance leader. And most people don't really care about that. But I like to use that hobby as one of my most significant leadership roles because I was over um, other, other youth in my ministry and I taught them and I was responsible and I had to make sure everybody was on the same page and that was like a huge chance for me to develop my leadership skills. So I include that on my resume when I went into college. So for a GPA in college, you want a overall or a cumulative GPA of at least a 3.5 or better. And then you want a science GPA of a 3.5 or better. Science GPA is exactly what it is. It's the GPA calculated based off of your science courses and your math courses. And medical schools look at that. Your cumulative GPA is all of the courses you've taken ever, okay? And so you wanna make sure you keep those GPAs at a 3.5 or higher. You are trying to get into a top tier medical school. You need your GPA to be almost a 4.0, if not a 4.0, because it is very competitive um, and you will need to have the strongest academic grades as possible. The MCAT is the make or breaker. If organic chemistry doesn't make or break, the MCAT will. It is a very difficult test. I think uh, when I took the test, the score was in the two digits. Now it's in the three digits um, and the average score is like a 500. And I heard that a good score was like a 505. That's what you should aim for. Um, you take the MCAT the spring semester before the year that you actually want to start medical school. So say you want to start medical school in August of 2023, you will want to take your MCAT in the spring semester of 2022. Okay, and so if you take the test in 2022, your spring semester, that means you need to start studying for the exam fall semester of 2021. And if you have to buy your own material, you need to start saving so that you can buy at that time. So you may have to start saving fall semester of 2020. And I'm sharing this information with you guys now because if you don't have someone to purchase your MCAT material for you to study, or if you're not in a program that provides it for you, you will have to buy it yourself. And you will need to save your money or figure out how to come up with the funds to purchase the material because you most likely will not do well on the MCAT without the proper studying and without the proper material. So make sure you are well prepared for to purchase your material, to have time to study your material, to actually take the test at the right time so that you can apply for the right application cycle. The MCAT is not free unless you are in a program that waives it or pays for it or something like that. But for the most part, it's not free. 
So make sure you Google how much it is. Uh, the price changes all the time. So I don't want to say a price right now and then somebody watches their, this a year from now and the price is different. So make sure you Google how much the MCAT actually cost. And I will go more into details about that because it can be confusing, but that's for another video, okay? The application cycle to apply to medical school starts a year before you actually want to start. So just like the MCAT, if you want to begin medical school in August of 2023, then you would apply to those medical schools in the May, June area of 2022, a whole year before you actually start. Because throughout that year, you go through the application cycle, you go through interviews, and then you find out where you actually match, okay? So it is a long process and uh, it can be very stressful and expensive. So just like the MCAT isn't free, applying to medical schools are not free either. So there is a base fee that you pay for like however many medical schools you apply to and then each additional medical school is an additional fee. So make sure you're Googling and you're up to date on what those fees are, okay? So once you get into medical school, whether it's an allopathic school or an osteopathic school, allopathic medicine, you will have an MD as your degree and then osteopathic medicine, you will have a DO as your degree. Uh, there are some differences and I will make another video that explains those differences, but basically both are doctors, both can specialize in whatever specialty they want to and both are recognized and respected as physicians here in America. Once you apply in college and you get into your medical school, you'll be in medical school for four years. Now the typical breakdown is either one and a half years to two years of basic clinical sciences and then two years to two and a half years of actual clinical experience and rotations. Uh, the basic sciences literally include uh, anatomy and physiology, pharmacology, microbiology, pathophysiology, uh, biochemistry, immunology, histology, all the allergies you can think of, you're gonna learn about the science. And then after you finish those basic sciences, you take your first board exam, which is step one or a complex one if you're a, a DO. Um, you take that at, at the end of your second year, right before you start your clinical rotations. The next two years you spend actually on rotations where you get your hands-on experience. Uh, you do surgery, pediatrics, internal medicine, psychiatry, OBGYN, neurology, family practice, ICU or critical care. Um, and then you get to do some electives like orthopedics and dermatology, and anesthesiology and pathology, uh, whatever you're interested in. So you do that for two years and then you, at the end of your third year, you actually take your second board's exam. It's called step two or complex two. And then your fourth year is pretty much just kind of finishing up rotations and applying to residency. So during your fourth year, just like you did in college to get into med school, you do the same thing. You start applying for residencies during your last year of medical school. And then once you go through that whole cycle, you do interviews, you spend thousands of dollars, <laughs> you find out where you match, and then you matriculate into residency. And for those who don't know, residency is the actual training that you get to become the doctor that you actually want to be. So if you watch my TikTok video and you saw that I'm in anesthesia, I am currently in an anesthesiology residency. So I have to do four years of residency training before I'm officially on my own, a practicing full getting paid anesthesiologist, okay? But within residency, you actually take your third board exam, which is step three. It has two parts. It's a two day exam, uh, but it's a lot less stressful than step one and step two, because for the most part, most people just, hey, just, they just take it, they pass it. There's really not a lot of incentive to do really, really well on step three. So it's just your last board. I just took mine a couple of months ago. I, I passed it. And um, yeah, so you take that during your residency. Now residency can range anywhere from three to seven plus years, depending on the type of doctor you actually want to be and the specialty you want to practice in. So I'll have another video that goes deep into that stuff. Uh, for this video, I just want to give you guys a broad overview of the timeline and what your life may look like over the next 10 to God knows how many years. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Be on the lookout for my next video, which is q and I'm gonna answer the questions that you guys asked on TikTok, as well as another video where I talk about my personal experience and how I handle the challenges. 
So you guys are awesome. Again, thank you for the feedback on TikTok. I am loving it. Uh, I'll keep this up as long as you guys keep wanting to know information. And if you want to hit me up directly, just DM me on Instagram. I hope this is helpful. You guys have a great day.